Hi right, everyone. So today we're going to talk about one that I don't want you to get twisted. Just don't get it twisted up. We're not talking about crooked glasses. We're talking about tilted glasses. And while initially that may sound like it's going to be the same topic, it's a completely different topic. What I'm going to focus on today is what we call the panoscopic and retroscopic tilt of glasses. This is a little bit different and roundabout way to get to what's going on with the angle here. And see glasses like that, it's not so good. Let's dive into it and have some fun today. So stick around for a little while and you learn a little bit more about what those angles are, why they're good and sometimes bad, and why you would adjust glasses a certain way to have different amounts of tilt to make the lenses work the way they're supposed to, or why it might cause them not to work. And most importantly, what you probably care about if you're here is how to get them where they belong in terms of that amount of tilt. Now, if you have freeform or any sort of digitally surfaced and compensated lens design, this is not something you want to go mucking around with because you can actually throw off calculations across the entire lens surface and really make your world murky and not fun. And we don't like that. So this is one thing that's very often overlooked on adjustments is these set of parameters the lenses were made to. It does matter especially as you get in stronger prescriptions, how the lens is calculated from the pupil center out across the rest of it. And that is based on a set of either one default measurements, which they, they vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. Everyone has their own set of defaults. They're all pretty close. And until you get up into the really strong stuff, it's not gonna make a significant difference from one default to another default. What's gonna matter more is that algorithm calculates it. Now, I don't want to sit here and harp on that all day long, so let's get into the thing that is actually what I came here to talk about, and that is the tilt of the glasses in front of the eyes. And I think it was kind of remiss not to mention the first part, so there you go. Now, what it's actually going to get down to is this angle here. And sometimes you see glasses not properly fitted where this is just where they are. And that creates a whole lot more angle of tilt here, as you can see with a dive like this. That changes everything. You're actually inducing extra cylinder into the lenses and not only decreasing the sharpness and clarity of the vision, but really affecting how things look at that point. You know, you can get by a millimeter or two, just like that. I'm sure people are doing that all day long at this point, just to take a little pressure off the ears with the masks and everything else going on because every little bit helps, right? Because we have enough crap pulling on our ears at this point, we don't need extra crap pulling on them and causing us more stress and pain than we're already dealing with, right? Now, that little angle there, what you're looking for, for most glasses is gonna be anywhere between six and 12 degrees of tilt. As you get up beyond that, is when you start noticing more and more of a difference in how the lenses perform. Particularly progressive lenses benefit from something closer between eight and 10, and in some cases 12 and 15, that depends a little bit on the length of the frame to what really matters there. The one I typically don't like to see because it affects things very much in a negative way in most cases, and there's gonna be somebody to chime in here and prove me wrong because it happens, but retroscopic tilt is when the bottom of the frame is out more, and that's gonna be something more like this. I can't even get it sit there just for the purpose of the video. You see, essentially the lenses are way out away from the cheeks, especially with progressive, especially with progressive lenses, that causes the reading area to be hard to access, decreases, oh, it increases the magnification by math, but doesn't increase the accessible amount of magnification, which is kind of what we actually want, right? It's how much of the lens you can use. Now, for single vision, obviously that's not as relevant a point to keep in mind, but it is worth noting because eventually you're gonna get there too. Now, pending any weird changes in technology, the change that we can do with our eyes, there's presbyopia drops out there that are in early research stages. That's gonna be interesting to see because 
it's just interesting to see. I like new tech like that. Maybe we'll get somebody else to chime in on how that is coming. That's not my area. Yeah, it's all about the glasses. Now, as far as actually adjusting and getting to the point where you can do this, kind of control that, you know, say you've stepped on and flattened them out and there's no tilt at all of the lenses. They're just flat in front of the eyes, perfectly perpendicular, which in theory sounds like it would be great. It is typically not. We don't like that image as much as you would think we do. In fact, most frames from the factory are going to have at least six degrees of panastomic tilt. And I know most of these from Live Off New York do. They've got that six degrees built in. And then where your ears sit, change it from there. And you can adjust the hinge tweak that. Now on this particular frame that is a little bit more of a task as it involves properly remating this hinge position here. So if we add in more panoscopic you can see that's not going to be flush anymore and especially with my neon green frame that's going to be pretty obvious. There's going to be a gap either at the bottom or the top depending on which direction I need to go. Now, for me, I'm picky about that kind of crap. I'll make the adjustment in hinge if necessary, then go back, file it down, sand it, repolish it, and make it look just like it did from the factory where it's perfectly made it up. And I'll leave it for you to decide whether I've done that with this frame or not. But on metal frames, it's actually even easier than that because it couldn't possibly be more complicated than that, could it? Essentially, you're going to take the frame, you're going to lay it out and see where the lenses are, whether you're tilted in or out, and you want it to be just ever so slightly in towards the face. Again, especially with progressive lenses, that offers a few different benefits. One is easier access to the reading portion of the lens and getting it closer, which increases the field that we perceive through the lens, which is always a nice bonus. Again, Depending on the design, you don't want to muck with this too much because it can actually affect things negatively rather than positively. But by adding typically a little bit of panoscopic tilt, a little bit of wrap, which is the angle around the face, typically known as face form because you'll match it closely to what the face is in the glasses. And that just amounts to this very slight arc right there. Super simple. But for a metal frame, you'll take and you'll hold the frame and see exactly how it's sitting, which direction you want to go. This is actually a pretty intuitive adjustment as what you'll be doing is if you want the cheeks, the lenses to come in towards the cheek more, you want the lenses to be more up. So you can rotate it and see it that quickly. So in that case, you would bring the hinge down to get that lens where it belongs. You would match and do the same amount of bend on the other side, not necessarily bent to the same exact place because not everybody's ears are level. And that's a whole other topic in getting the frame level. I'll link a card up here to get you pointed to the right direction for that video if that's your problem. Now, if it's not, then you're in the right place. Now, unless your glasses are shaking on one cheek, which is another problem that we'll link to in another video that we've done. We. Me, me, we, we, uh, anyways. So that's kind of a pretty good brief overview about panoscopic tilt versus retroscopic tilt and why you might want some more panoscopic tilt. Now, why you might want a little more retroscopic tilt is because you're just a weird individual and we don't know what to think about you. <laughs> I guess you want it off of your cheeks and that was a bad fit to begin with. I don't know, but Typically, that's not something I want to shoot for. There are a few kind of obscure cases where it is beneficial. Typically, not. There you go. I'm going to stop blabbering on about panoscopic and retroscopic tilt. I think I have even bored myself with it at this point. Maybe. Nah, I never get bored with this stuff. Anyways, that is all I've got today. If this video helped you out or if it made you just swim in circles and go, what the hell is he even talking about? Then leave me some feedback down below and let me know what you thought. Even if you hated it, I promise I like all the feedback. I don't hate any of you. Some of you probably hate me, but eh. <laughs> that's another story. I'll catch you guys next time. Take care. Hope to catch you in the next video.